Listen, it doesn't matter if you're trying to figure out how to save money on a low income or if you're making six figures a year already. It doesn't matter because you can always improve the amount of money you're able to save by simply acquiring these frugal living habits I'm about to go over in this video. The first thing I want to address about frugal living is the fact that it can be very difficult because it requires discipline. And that's not something you're born with and it definitely wasn't something I was born with. But it's required if you wanna apply any of the advice that I'm about to give you. And in order to do that, you really have to manage the way you think. This is really important, so I want you to pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. One of the biggest frugal living habits you could ever have is to act on your thoughts in such a way that you're adding on to your financial future at all times. And the only way you can do that is by having this thought habit going through your head every single day. And that thought is, I'm in control of my finances. You honestly have to think and believe that. A frugal person is not about to let the fact that gas prices just went up affect their mentality. A frugal person isn't gonna let a tax refund make them forget how to act. You know how people get extra money in their pockets and so now they feel like they can just splurge? Yeah, not frugal people. This type of control runs a lot deeper than just those financial examples that I just gave. It's also their emotions. We all know that inflation exists. We all know that this pandemic has negatively impacted a good portion of the entire world. Do you think that makes a frugal person want to give up and just stop everything they're doing? Do you think that's going to make a frugal person just throw away all their financial goals just because it seems like it's impossible to achieve them now because life just isn't fair? Do you think they're going to just sit around complaining about how the upcoming stimulus check is only going to be $600? Like, how dare the government, like the government owes us something, like the world owes us something? No, no, no. You owe it to yourself and your family to make sure that you're in a good financial situation despite the pandemic, despite inflation, despite if the government gives us $600 or $600,000. It is your responsibility. That's how a frugal person thinks. Why? Because we can't control what the government gives us. There's no victim's mentality in the mind of a frugal person. See, that's the problem. Take away the pandemic right now. Let's say the pandemic just disappears off the face of the earth. I guarantee people will have another excuse. Oh, well, the sky is blue today, so you know I can't even pay my bills. Oh, well, I didn't want to wake up this morning and go to work, so you know, they, they didn't even pay me. Can you believe that they didn't even pay me? And they'll really think the job did them wrong for not paying them. So me as a frugal person, if I'm talking to the person that I just described, the same amount of time that you spent complaining about, oh, woe is me. Oh my gosh, my job doesn't pay enough. Oh my gosh, I didn't get that raise. That's the same amount of time you could be spending putting together a financial plan, setting up financial goals, and then mapping out how you can get there. That's what frugal people do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Let me ask you this. Where in your job description does it say that the company that you work for owes you a raise every single year? Where, where does it say that at? Because I don't see it, bro. You signed up for this. Just like when you sign your lease, this year it might be $1,100 and next year it might be $1,200. But you can expect it to pretty much go up every single year. Are you really about to complain about that? Like you just signed up for it. You literally just agreed to it. You took a pen. Where, where did my pen go? You took a literal pen and you said, with my signature, I, John Doe, or I, Jane Doe, I completely agree. I am in complete agreement and I am in complete compliance with the terms and regulations of this document. And, and I, I know that people don't talk that way. I, I know. <laughs> I don't even think the lease agreements word it that way because that sounds way too weird. That's just, that's geeky. But my, my point is, nowhere on that agreement does it say, oh, we promise your rent is going to be the exact same forever. It doesn't say that anywhere. And people still get mad. Like, I've seen people get so mad. You see faces turn red, veins popping out up here, right here. You see people clenching their fence. Like, what are you about to do? You're about to fight your lease agreement that you just agreed to? It's almost like people are starting to expect their rent to go down. Like, why are you? People really do. Because they, they get so mad. They have to expect it to go down. But how is it going to go down when it's been historically proven that the, the, the demand and the cost of living goes up? over and over and over again, year after year. It's like, you should expect it by now. See, that's the problem right there. I don't understand how people, see, I'm not gonna get started tonight. Look, my point is this, the same people who complain about everything I just talked about, you know, the rent, the stimulus checks, the money their job pays them or lack thereof, the raise they didn't get, they're not in control. And more than half the time, it's because they don't have a budget. I used to preach this all the time, but I'm about to bring it back. Most people ask for more and more and more, and then eventually they get more. And then what do they do? They spend more. What kind of sense does that make? 
And I'm not about to sit here in front like I've never done it before, but since I've learned from that mistake, I'm coming from a place of don't do what I was out here doing. Look, 10 times out of 10, people aren't utilizing the money they do have properly. 10 times out of 10, yes. 10 times out of 10, bro. It's either you're spending too much money unnecessarily or you're holding on to too much money without any of it giving you a return. And I talk about more of that in my other videos, but look right here, this is extremely important, so I want you to pay very close attention. You can control everything I just said by simply budgeting. It's just that simple. The problem with budgeting is the reason that I struggled with budgeting at first, and it might be the reason that you were struggling with budgeting at first, and it's simply because People view budgeting, it doesn't matter who you are, people view budgeting as a mechanism that restricts them. It restricts you from spending money as you please, and it restricts you from living life to its fullest. That's what it feels like, at least at first. There's two problems with that way of thinking. It keeps you in the now without any regard to what could be happening in the future and what should be happening in the future. And when you're not thinking about the future and you're just thinking about right now, what benefits you today, tomorrow, the next day, then you're, you're, you're not living the right way in terms of finance. What that's going to lead to is complaining in the future and financial hardships in the future. I don't want a budget. I want that car right now. Okay. I don't want a budget. I want that TV right now. Okay, I don't care if it takes me a lifetime to pay it off. I want to swipe my credit card right now. Be my guest. And the second reason is, if you think about budgeting in that way, you're doing it wrong. Budgeting is not about restricting anything, but it's about control. And what budgeting really is, is a blueprint to achieve your financial goals. And just to be specific, when I say financial goals, I'm talking specifically about savings goals and getting out of debt types of goals. Obviously, this wouldn't apply to increasing your income because budgeting is not going to help you increase your income. I'm, I'm just saying. It's a lot like when you want to build a house. And I know I have this really weird thing where I compare money to architecture, so don't mind me. I mean, pay attention to what I'm saying, but just don't mind my weird analogies. Anyway, it's just like you deciding that you want to build a custom house and you want a two-story house with a two-car garage with big windows, an open floor plan, and you want four bedrooms and you want three and a half bathrooms. That's as specific as it gets, right? So you know exactly what you want. So then what do they do? They make a blueprint of that. Okay, so now that you've envisioned this and you put this image in someone else's head and then they make a blueprint of it, now you can see everything. You can see the dimensions. You can see the square footage that you guys agreed on. You can see how everything is laid out and you can decide right there if that's how you want your house to be or if you wanna go a different route. You get what I'm saying? So when you set your financial goals, that's you saying what type of house you want. And when you make your budget, that's the blueprint to meet whatever that financial goal is. And look, here's something that frugal people do that for some reason no one else does. They look at their, their budgets on a monthly basis and they make revisions on it every now and then, every few months, maybe even every month sometimes. But they, they make changes based off of their needs and based off of what their goals are. If they look at their budget over and over again they, and they start to see patterns and they see things that they're spending either too much money on or maybe they're spending money on stuff they don't even use anymore like a streaming services, a magazine subscription, maybe it's an app that they're paying for, maybe it's music. The point is they, they look at it they're like, I don't even use that anymore. So they cut it out of their budget completely. Just like the blueprint for the house. If you don't like the blueprint, you send it back. You have them revise it. So now let's say you're revising your budget and you're looking at it like, okay, I saved $5,000 in X amount of months. So now I want to save another $5,000, but I want to do it twice as fast. How can I do that by shortening my budget? So let's say in this case, you spend $200 a month on restaurants and going out to eat and stuff like that. So you then look at it and you're like, you know what? I want to chop that in half and we're going to make it a hundred now. I'm only spending a hundred and that is the absolute max that I'm going to allow myself to spend on eating out every single month. So you make that adjustment and then you look at it again and you're like, you know what? I can cut this expense too. You know, I'm living by myself in this place that has two bedrooms. You know what? Let me get a couple of roommates and I can pay a third of the price of what I'm paying right now. So now you make yet another adjustment. So you've just revised it twice. And look, you might be able to do that type of adjustment where you have two people come and live with you. See, I flat out refuse to do that because I don't like people like that. But what I'm saying is you can actually improve your finances just by doing that. It's the mindset behind what I'm saying. You don't have to apply the specific examples to your life, but it's training you how to think like, you know, let me look at my budget again and look at it. I mean, you're telling me you can't look at your budget right now and not point out one thing that you could spend less money on every month. Come on now. And the key with those examples is all you did was made a few simple adjustments and now you've drastically cut the amount of money that you're spending a month. So now you can choose wise things to do with this money instead of just spending it and spending it with nothing in return. Now you can put it in your savings account. Now you can start investing some of it. 
And the big thing is you maintain control because guess what? In the in the rent example that I was just talking about, cutting it by a third, well, guess what? You start off living by yourself. So if for some reason your roommates can't stay there, if for some reason they get kicked out or whatever the reason is, they can't afford to live there anymore. You can afford to live there by yourself if you have to because that's what you were doing all along. And that's what I'm saying. A frugal person maintains that financial control because they know that, okay, I'm still good. I can still hold this place down by myself without being affected financially because I've applied this mindset because I'm abiding by the budget that I set for myself because of the discipline that I have because of the mindset that I have. And if you're new to budgeting or if you just want to learn more about budgeting, I'm going to give you a little bit more specifics on that just because you lasted this long throughout the video. Your budget can include anything. I mean, obviously you have the necessities, which is mainly what budgets are used for, but people got to understand you can put in a multitude of different things that suits you directly. You can put in how much you want to put in your savings every single month. Like you can give yourself that number on your budgeting sheet that says, hey, I want to put $200 in my savings every single month or whatever number it is. You can put how much you want to put towards debt, charities, tithing, donations, anything you can think of, you can budget that within. And don't just close your mind to just necessities because what, what happens is a mistake that I see happen a lot of times is when you just have necessities up there, you tend to just spend money blindly on everything else without any regard to, to this over here. You know what I'm saying? So that's a big mistake I see. And you would think people don't make that mistake, but they do it every single day. And to that point, you can actually add what are called sinking funds, which are basically just mini funds that you set aside for things that you want or things that you know you don't have money for in your budget that you want to be able to pay for in a few months. So if I know I want to get a big flat screen TV, let's say a 60 inch TV, then I need to set aside six, seven hundred, maybe eight hundred dollars. So over the course of the next three, four months, I want to be able to save six hundred dollars. So then you set a goal, okay? So for these next few months, I want to put away a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars every single month. So you budget for that. If your budget allows for you to do that, then cool. Write it on. Write it in there. But the whole point of sinking funds is by saving incrementally so that you don't hurt your budget. So if you're spending money that you would have been spending in your budget anyways to add on to that sinking fund, well, guess what? You're not hurting anything. The thing about being frugal is they save their money for later anyways. So if they're saving their money, whether or not it's for a financial cushion for later or if it's for, you know, just wanting to buy something later, that they're doing it with respect to the future. Anyway, I just wanted to add on to that budgeting. Since I was talking about budgeting anyways, I wanted to just give my two cents about that because I see it done wrong a lot of the time. And that was just my little bit of an example, but I have something so much bigger happening in 2021, which is a budgeting course coming out for singles and for couples. And all I'm really doing right now is just telling you like, hey, it's a hyper-specific course that talks about frugal living, what it means to live a frugal lifestyle, how to actually budget your money and how to actually save your money and do the correct things with your money. So I'm really excited about it. It's coming out in a few months in 2021. I can't stress this enough. You will learn a bunch of frugal living principles that I don't even get to talk about on this channel because it's, I mean, I could make a million videos about frugal living. There's so much within the umbrella of frugal living. So I've had to make a one-stop shop, which is this course about all of that stuff. Because when it comes to frugality, Budgeting has to be on point. That's like one of the most basic parts of frugal living. Like, how are you going to make plans financially and there's no budget? It doesn't make sense, right? So that's why I hyper-focus on budgeting in the course. Anyway, super excited about making it. And I just wanted to make you aware that it's going to be existing very, very, very soon. So you can be ready for when it comes out. But anyways, you don't got to worry about that because the moment it comes out, the whole world will know about it because I want as many people to have exposure to this as possible to add as much value as possible. But it's because of this. And this is the last thing I'm going to leave you with the final and last frugal living habit, which happens to be the most important frugal living habit, in my opinion, is this. Frugal people know when it's time to invest in themselves and they make those investments with the intention of bringing more money into their lives or helping them save more money in the future. Either way, it adds a financial benefit to them. And that's the reason why I advocate investing in yourself so much because every single dollar that I spent on myself, my education, my skills has been money well spent. Even the investment mistakes that I made because now I can sit down and give you a relatable story about how I messed up with my finances, how I was ill-informed and still put a bunch of my money into something where it didn't belong. And since my channel, which I invested in a bunch of education in, is monetized now, I get paid to tell relatable stories about my financial mistakes. In other words, I wouldn't have as much content to bring if I didn't make those financial mistakes. And the content is how I get paid right now. 
Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.